APIS 8 is released now and they implemented 144 changes which can be downloaded here. I reviewed all of them so you don't need to do this and in this video I will show you in my opinion the best 7 features. Number 1. Generate a request to an AI chatbot. It is now possible to generate a request to an AI chatbot which you can then read back into your APIS FMA file. If you want for example all possible functions for a system element, then insert a new function and then select the new icon copy AI prompt to the clipboard. In the new appeared window you can select which information should be copied and then confirm with OK. Now APIS copied the selected information into the clipboard and then you can open an AI tool and paste the text from the clipboard into the prompt address line. After the AI tool is finished you can copy the answer, switch back to APIS and select the second new icon Paste AI answer from the clipboard. Then you can see in the lower window the answer from the AI tool and there you can select all answers which you want to implement into your APIS FMA file. Just drag and drop them into the upper half of the window and then they are implemented as functions because I wanted all possible functions to this system element. Then you can close this window by pressing enter and then all selected functions are implemented in your system element. This works also with system elements failures, and preventive and detection actions. Number 2. Copy variant specific values. It is now possible to copy variant specific values when working with variants. To understand this better, I will first show you how this worked in APIS 7 without this option. I have a product characteristic and three variants, variant 1, variant 2, and variant 3. In variant 1, my product characteristic has a special characteristic and the dimension with tolerance. In variant 2 there is a node on this product characteristic and in variant 3 there are no variant specific values. If I now go back to variant 1 and copy this product characteristic and paste it into all three variants, then the variant specific symbol has disappeared and all values are now set as master values. If I now switch to variant 2 you can see that there is the special characteristic from variant 1 and the node is deleted and in variant 3 the values from variant 1 are also there as well as in the master structure. This is how it works if you don't have set this new option. Now let me show how it works with the new option. First of all you need to enable this option in your workstation settings. To do this navigate to tools in the top menu bar and then select workstation settings. Then navigate to copy and select copy the variant specific values when copying and confirm with OK. If I now select again variant 1 and copy the product characteristic and paste the product characteristic into all variants, you will see that the variant specific value icon with all its information is still there. Variant 2 still has the node and variant 3 is empty. This option is disabled by default so you need to enable it and please note this option is a workstation setting, this means it is only valid for you and not for your colleague. Number 3. Layout elements. It is now possible to define items as a so called layout element. I will show you what this means. If you have in your APIS FMA, for example, at the very top level system element, customer requirements, or environmental requirements, or any other requirements, and you use standard functions as separator, then you can now convert these functions to so called layout elements. To do this just right mouse click on a function then under more properties select is layout element. Now this function is a layout element without the typical function related icons like function net or the instance count information. Number 4 predefined failures. It is now possible to generate predefined failures. To do this just right mouse click on the function you want to add predefined failures, then create failures and there you can select one of the three predefined sections, two for design FMA and one for process FMA. If you select one the predefined failures will be implemented below the selected function. You can also change the predefined sections under administration in the top menu bar and then attributes and categories. In the new appeared window select in the upper drop down list naming patterns for failures. Here you see in the column naming pattern for failures 
the category name and in the column failure you can see all possible failures which belongs to this category. And here you can define new failures if you want and even assign a background color. If you now close this window and add this change category to your function, then you can also see the new added failure with background color. Number 5. Print open actions per person. It is now possible to print open actions per person. For example, if you have four responsible persons, you can now print four PDF files containing only the actions of each person. How to do this, I'll show you now. Open the deadline editor under editors in the upper menu bar, then open the print settings window and select print to PDF. Now select the print per person option and also the print to directory option and select the designated folder where the printout should be stored and confirm with OK and select in this window for which persons you want to have a printout. Then navigate to the selected folder and there you will find one PDF file for each responsible person which you can send via email to the person. Number 6. Status icons in the variance matrix editor. It is now possible to show and hide items via icons in the bottom status bar in the variance matrix editor. If you open the variance matrix editor, you can now see in the bottom status bar that there are the same icons as in the structure tree editor. With these icons you can now show and hide items in this editor, which was not possible in APIS 7. If you double left mouse click on one of the icons, the respective element will disappear or will be visible again in the editor. Number 7. New column for machine translated items. There is now a new column in the translation editor which shows you if an item was machine translated or not. You can find the editor under administration and then terminology and translation. In the new appeared window, you need to select a second language by double mouse click left on the header, select the language you want to translate into and confirm with OK. Now you see in the column automatic translation a check mark for these items which are automatically translated. To translate an item, just right mouse click on that cell and select automatic translation EN to DE. You will get a successful translated notification if everything worked well. But this only works if you have set an automatic translation tool in APIS. How you can translate 500,000 characters per month in APIS for free, I explained in this video, so watch it next.